Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think what needs to be said here right off the bat is planet Earth is a spaceship. It's an island. Nu, nu tine. It's an island. But it's also traveling through space and time pretty, pretty darn fast, right? I don't know. How fast is this thing going? By the, from when we started this conference, how far have we traveled through space? on this beautiful, beautiful spaceship. It is so beautiful. The sun rises, the sun sets, the water, the, the beautiful people. Point at you, Colin. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, it, it, the, there's some kind of mysterious power inside this planet that is generating what scientists call an electromagnetosphere. It's, an, it's, an, it's a protective shield that protects us while we're traveling through space. What conducts energy? Minerals and whatnot, precious veins of precious metals. So the metaphor that I use to, to teach my children about this is like driving down the highway in a car at a very fast speed, and you're not a mechanic, but you've got a toolbox. You don't completely understand how that car works, but you start taking it apart while you're driving down the road. And, and, I, and that's what I think about when we were in uh, Australia at the World Parks Congress in Sydney, and there was a bunch of elders from all over the planet, and we had a session just hearing from them their ideas about the role that diamonds play in their natural structures in the earth. We have uh, some people out there calling oil the black snake and demonizing it. But when you think about what that substance really is, it's part of this world as well. It's the residue of all, all ancestors of all living things. It's a sacred substance. We don't have to demonize it, we have to respect. Isak, we have to respect, we have to be aware, we have to know what these things are. And so uh, the other thing that needs to be said here, and, and this actually came from Australia as well, uh, what the elders talked to, talked to me about the ancient times of their land when the rainbow serpent moved across the land and endowed the land with energy that they would, their ancestors would walk along later um, throughout the history of their society and they could learn songs from the land. What an incredible idea. And when that, when that rainbow serpent went off the side of the continent and into the river, sorry, into the ocean, it carved out a, a piece of land that became part of the MacArthur River, right? And so that area is part of that sacred, sacred site. The sacred site isn't in one location, it follows this trail. And lo and behold, mineral exploration companies discovered precious metals in the riverbed, under that river. And so they made plans to re-divert um, the river and mine in the river. And of course, the local people there, they were just uh, horrified by that idea because that's a sacred site for them. And uh, the, law, the, the mining company wanted to mine it. And so, so they actually fought it. And, and due to a technicality in paper, in the paper law of Western Australia, they won. The, the, it was disallowed. So what the, Australia, the government did the next day is they sat down and they changed, they got out their whiteout and they changed that law. So that stipulation was no longer there. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, and um, and then and then shortly after they changed their own law, um, they they did exactly what they were planning to do. They rediverted that river, and then they mined the hell out of that sacred natural site. Excuse my language; it it upsets me because I met some of those elders and I looked them in the eye, and they just, they described the pain that they went through. And then what the uh, what the Australian government did to those, to those folks. They gave them an indigenous protected area down the road. Here, you can be yourself over here, but we need this thing for the mine, you know? So that's why some, you know, that's why there's mixed emotions in there. The, the, the takeaway point 
about that is that sacred natural sites often go along with precious metal deposits because planet Earth is an energetic thing. And, and energy moves through metal, we know that. It's, it conducts better through certain areas. So how do we, what do we do? I mean, it is such a beautiful ride. It's such a beautiful experience. The ecosystems and their natural states. I would just sit back and enjoy the ride. You know, we're so worried about going zigzagging around this earth um, but we're all going to the same place together. So, so fundamentally, we need to, we need to reconnect with the, with the new. We need to re-cultivate that relationship. Um, I'm often accused of being a philosopher, and then I ask people, what does the word philosophy mean? Um, but I will give you a couple practical examples, and this is what Stan Stevens wanted me to talk about here. In Tlaukut, where I'm from, on the west coast of Vancouver Island, we created the Haukman Tribal Park in 2007, which allowed us to create a positive alternative vision for how we want to live on our lands. It wasn't about what we were against. It was about what we were for. And we created that vision, and we, we adopted th their strategies, and we created maps. And so we were able to achieve in one afternoon with the Ministry of Forest, when they tried to access some, clear, some old growth um, stands in our territory, we achieved in one afternoon what would have taken years of court battles, blockades, direct action on the land. Um, but we, we achieved it by creating a compelling vision of a different way of living together in those ecosystems. We did it again when Imperial Metals wanted to come in and, and look at um, exploratory drilling in Tranquil Creek. We created the Tranquil Creek Tribal Park. And we created a positive vision, an alternative vision, and we, um, we rallied partners. So when we went to meet with the Minister of Energy and Mines, we had the executive director of the Tofino Long Beach Chamber of Commerce sitting with us on our side of the table, representing over 100 small businesses in Clockwood Sound. And, and you know, the minister usually says, so thank you for expressing your opinion, but I have to also be accountable to my constituents and we need economic development. She's lost track of time. <laughs> She's so enthralled. No. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so, so we created a positive alternative vision. We got the Tofino Long Beach Chamber of Commerce to get on board with our vision. And we got the city council, mayor and council of Victoria to pass a unanimous resolution in support of our Tranquil Creek Tribal Park. Isn't that awkward? Because the, the provincial legislature is based in Victoria and Bill Bennett's gotta secretively get in and out of the buildings. Um, so that mine never happened. And I will say, to in, in concluding, uh, 2019 marks the 35-year anniversary of the Mears Island Tribal Park. Um, Mears Island Tribal Park was founded on ESOC, which is the highest law of the New Chanoth Constitution, represented in our art as the Sun Moon Crest. And it has never been recognized by the province or the federal government, and I'm actually glad that has never happened, but those trees are still standing. And so that's the, that's the power and strength of uh, New Chanoth law in my territory. And uh, my Uncle Moses Martin was the elected chief counselor in 1984, and he is our elected chief counselor again today. And we've been celebrating um, the 35 year anniversary of the Mears Island Tribal Park, not to pat ourselves on the back, but to hold up an example of, of what is possible. To, to uh, and, and give three simple messages that I'll end on. Uh, and we're gonna be saying this all year. We got Harrison Ford to sign the paddle. The paddle's coming, it's on its way. David Suzuki, the, we're gonna give away a big canoe, a bentwood cedar box, and we're gonna have fun all year long doing it. 
Three simple messages. Know who you are, believe in yourself, and be bold and courageous for the unborn future generations to come. Klecko, klecko.